Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, the data in the paper instead of the data in the chapter six. Um, I think there's a complete set of PVT data in this uh, in this paper here, so we'll use use that as a point of discussion. So let's fetch the table and bring it in here. So this is a constant volume depletion data set from a uh, fluid in the North Sea. I think it's uh, Albuschel, which was one of the earliest gas condensate fields in Norway in the Ekofisk area. Um, the, the stages in this uh, uh, in this test, one, this is the dew point, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Didn't make me a liar. That's good. Um, one thing that we forgot to put on our set of measured data here, which is an optional thing. is the final residual oil composition. Actually, you don't need this O here since X implies that it's an oil for stage the, la the final stage. And um, in this particular test, you can see that the equilibrium oil of the final stages is, is in fact measured. Okay, so then we've got the equilibrium vapor compositions we talked about. These are given in mole percent, even though the table doesn't seem to give that. So, for example, the initial fluid had 73.2 mole percent methane, 8.2 mole percent C7 plus, and See what else we've got here. We've got the Z factor, ZG. So at the initial dew point, 1.238. Um, the Z factor that varies with pressure here, of course, we know it varies with pressure from the exercise we've been doing. Okay. But what else is changing with the gas as we move from pressure to pressure here? It's got two dependencies. Remember the Z factor of gas is a function of the pressure, the temperature, and the gas composition. So the gas composition is also a function of pressure. So this is changing for two reasons. NP, okay, NP is actually equal to the sum of these delta N uh, produced values at different stages from, well, we start removing uh, gas only after the second stage, so from 2 to whatever uh, stage we're looking at, J. So it's stage J. And we take all of these uh, values divided by how much you have 
initially um, in the cell. In this case, the saturation pressure is the dew point, so I'll just write the number of moles at the dew point. So it's kind of a percentage of the moles that have been removed from what we started with, total. SL, what they call SL here, is just the oil volume over the dew point volume in a percentage. And you can see it reaches a maximum here at 3,000 psi. So the maximum liquid dropout is 20, 21.6. At least it's somewhere, somewhere between here and here, I guess. reaches a maximum. This is that molecular weight of the C7 plus. Um, it also gives the the um, that specific gravity that I'll just mention what that is. That's a liquid specific gravity at standard conditions over water, a standard water density, thousand, no, thousand kilograms per cubic meter. So that's a liquid, this is a liquid specific gravity of the C7 plus material. It's, it's estimated from a correlation. It's not measured, at least not usually. <clears throat> and those two numbers are given so that you have some way to to work with this C7 plus. Now, in reality, you can you can see that this C7 plus is is getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay, which is generally the case. And then the final oil C7 plus is like an oil, about like aquifers. So you're not only getting something that's, you're getting less of it, this C7 plus, but it's becoming lighter and lighter. In fact, if you looked at the color of the, of, you know, if you took this, mis you know, each, each mixture that's taken out of the cell, they actually flash it down to stock tank conditions to, to find the composition. And if you looked at that little bit of liquid that they flashed out from each removed gas, it would probably change in color from a, an amber, light brown, lighter and lighter, yellow, maybe even to something that looks white or, or clear towards the end. So this is a very light C7 plus. So it's primarily C7 to C, you know, maybe C12. There's probably not much of the heavier stuff. Whereas this, this one here has, you know, a wide distribution of, of these heavy components, C7 through, you know, maybe C30 and even heavier. Where are those heavier components going? Where are they disappearing to? Well, they're disappearing into this condensate that's in the cell. Okay, so these are, this is an example set of data uh, for a constant volume depletion test. Uh, any questions about, you know, it's just a procedure, it's, um, 
set of data. Now we're going to try to talk a little bit about how do we make use of this data. Okay. So an example application of the data. So, let's say that well, in fact, the I don't know what the, let's say the initial test of this fluid produced make it a big weld make it interesting right um, let's say that it made on test 2 10 to the 6th standard cubic meters per day total gas <clears throat> pretty big gas well. So the question is what might that oil rate have been? Okay. Now <clears throat> I could give you the pressure and temperature of the separators and you guys know how to make those calculations. You have the composition, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But that takes takes a long time, right? Okay. So what I'm going to say is that this simple two-stage process can be approximated by all of the C5 and lighter components okay now this initial composition is coming in here we're looking at the initial composition at the dew point this is our original test. So let's say that this gas that we're metering in the amount of 2 million standard cubic meters per day represents the C5 and lighter stuff. And consequently, what comes out as oil is the C6 and heavier stuff. That's going to be our surface oil and our surface gas. It might be, it's not a bad assumption, it might be C4 minus and C5 plus, but it's something like that, at least approximately. is producing from the sand and let's say that our geologist you know from the seismic and the log data and so forth and so on is is going to give us an estimate of 10 to the ninth cubic meters. I have to, I have to do a little calculation. I have to give you a realistic number. Um, um, Uh, 
that's going to be about the size of a little bit less than um, it's, it's pretty pretty big. So I'm I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. It's not it's like Frigg, the original gas field in Norway. It's about that size, I think. But uh, um, well, okay, we'll just keep it that way. It, it's yeah, big stuff, big rotor. Okay. Okay. So the question is, first, how much oil would have been produced? Okay. And the second is that, um, based on finding that, we should be able to find out if you took all of this reservoir that we think is there, and we process it through something similar, then you basically would come up with an estimate of the what's called the initial gas in place. It's this kind of gas, and the initial, <coughs> excuse me, oil in place, which is this kind of oil. And these are the numbers that you know Helga Lund likes to see. These are the, the numbers. Now, even Helga doesn't expect to produce 100% of that. He realizes that we'll get 80% of the gas in the best situation. We might get 30% of the oil, but still, you can, he can make the calculations at the dinner table. You know, where he's eating dinner is not where we eat dinner, but still, they have napkins, and he can write on the, on not the paper napkins, but on the, you know, the, the nice napkins, and he can still pay for the napkins. So, so the thing is that you'd like to know, do I have 1 billion or 10 billion? Uh, nooks or 100 billion nooks, you know, what do I have? And so we're going to do this kind of calculation from, from this information, from the CVD test. So I've only given you a gas rate here from the test, from the initial test, and I want us to calculate the oil rate. Okay? And what we know is just this information here. So the stuff we're supposed to be producing right now is this stuff right here. And this stuff is becoming oil, and all of this is becoming gas. Right? And then Curtis says that we can assume this simplifying process. So, so let's just make an example calculation. Um, what we do is that we say, what's the gas molar rate here? What is the gas molar rate associated with this? Okay, to get it in moles. So what's the gas molar rate? I'll write it like that, molar rate. How do we convert standard cubic meters per day to kilogram moles per day? Yeah, this magic number, 23.68 standard cubic meters of any gas, standard conditions, per kilogram mole. So we take 2.10 to the sixth divided by 23.68 per kilogram mole. And what does that give us? Eighty thousand. Yeah. 
Anybody get, I'd like to hear it twice. Anybody get this number? Yeah? Okay. So, then the question is, how many moles of oil do we produce? We don't need anything on properties. Okay, what what we know from this table, I'm sure it's the same thing you're you're saying. I didn't quite hear you, but what we know is that we know the ratio of the moles here to the ratio or to the moles here, right? Okay, and we only need to calculate one of them because you know it sums to 100. Okay, so what is the sum of the C6 plus? Well, that's 0, 3, 9.3, right? So this is 9.3 mole percent. So what we know is that Q, QG molar over QO molar is 9.3, what did I get, zero? Okay, two, the gas part is just 100 minus that, which is 81.70, no, 91.70. Don't let me calculate your salary. You know, so it's a 91, it's the end of Friday, so is that right? So so how much do we get here? It's 90.7, there we go, see? Okay, so what do we get here? It's just a molar ratio, if it's mole percent or if it's kilogram moles, it's, it's just the ratio of moles Eight point, eight, eight point six has to be mm -hmm. one more digit. Six. One eight point six six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but that's. Thousands. No. The number is eight thousand six hundred sixty four. Yeah, but if you take 90, 90 divided by 9. Yeah, right. Before we had, before we had 84.5,000. No, no, no. We don't go there. I, I, I don't, I don't want to go there yet. I just want to know, for any system, the moles of anything to anything. If this was too... So, so this number here... is nine, yeah, but that ratio will be this number. Nine point seventy-five. Okay. Okay. Just the moles of gas, which we see C five minus to the moles. So this is their C five minus molar amount to the C six plus. Okay. Now we can calculate this because we know that, right? So that's Q, G from the test over 9.75. And that was, I can't remember, 84.5, 10 to the third, 9.75 kilogram moles per day. So that number is. Like that? Well, okay. 8,667 kilogram moles. How many dollars per kilogram mole do we get? <laughs> we don't know. 
Okay? <laughs> Nobody knows that. Somebody knows that. Uh, I don't know. They're too smart to be petroleum engineers, so they should do something else. Okay, so we, we want this in stock tank barrels per day. Just out of, you know, we also want it in standard cubic meters per day. Okay? So how do we get that? Well, we've got kilogram moles. We need to know the molecular weight of that oil to get it into, right? To translate this into kilograms per day. And then we need the density of that guy to get it into cubic meters per day. And then we can convert that to stock tank barrels. And then we use $108.7 per barrel, just kind of. Okay, so we need this and we need this. Well, this is 6 and 7, the molecular weight of uh, 6 and 7. It's going to be this average. You guys know how to average molecular weights, right? Okay. So 1.09. So 1.09 times the molecular weight of C6, which is around... Well, you look in the book. Uh, look in the book. Anybody got the book? Appendix A. Plus eight point for the C seven plus eight point two one, and here we've got its molecular weight, one hundred eighty four. Molecular weight of C six. Six times. 14, 84 plus 2, 86. I mean, about. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Divided by the total amount, that's just the mass, that's moles times molecular weight of each component, divided by that total 9.30 moles. It gives us something less than 184, 170. I'm going to say two. I, I don't know. I need your help. 172? My, I'm on today. Huh? Anybody want to play poker? Okay. And then the density is a little, okay. It's the same thing on top because this represents mass, okay. So it's the same thing on top, whatever you got there. But the volume is this ideal volume mixing that you had in your exercise, right? So that's... 1.0986. Now we need the density of C6 standard conditions. And that's around point mm, 682. See if I'm on a roll. What's the density in the appendix A for C6? I say 682. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. If I'm right, then I'm, I'm on drugs. I think I, it's not, Something's uh, down to plus 8.21184. And here I do know the density, it's up here. See, it's got 816 kilograms per cubic meter. But what was the C6? Okay. 660. Okay, no, it's not too far from six, 660. Okay, so that's, that's going to be short of 816. I'm going <laughs> to guess again just because, you know, I, mean, what, I don't want to calculate it, so I'm going to guess again. I'm going to say mm, 801 kilograms per cubic meter. But you guys are going to correct me. Don't pamper me. Don't say, oh, yeah, Curtis, that's eight, mm, 801. Let's just move on. Somebody needs to calculate it. It takes a little time. It's the same thing as up here. This is a lot more fun than going to Uka, right? <laughs> no, no, it's 
kidding. So you, some of you guys don't know what UCA is. But. Well, I can tell you that if you go to UCA and you know as little Norwegian as I did when I went the first time, it's not very funny because everything is funny, everybody's laughing, and you're the only one who doesn't know what they're laughing about. <laughs> so it's kind of a, you have to, to yeah, know. Pretty close. It's pretty close? Eight? Yeah, it's like 806. 806. Well, that, I just slipped. I was just, just kidding. Okay, so then we need this to get our standard cubic meters per day. Okay, and that's our 866, 7, 172 over 806. More than a thousand, I think. Okay, I'll just round up. And then times 6.28 stock tank barrels per standard cubic meter. Helga is looking more and more smile. You know, we're getting up to nice big rates here. 11. 11,000. Okay. We'll drop the. So that's a big well. It's a gas well. It's a lot of gas and it's a very lot of oil. Now, the ratio of QO to Q gas, okay? is a very important number in terms of quantifying gas condensates. But um, I just want us to calculate that. I'll do it first in metric units. That's 1850 divided by the original gas rate was 2 million. So that's uh, 925 standard cubic meters per million standard cubic meters. Is that correct? And then we have to divide by 5.615 to get barrels per million standard cubic feet. So, um, you basically have 5.615 uh, cubic feet per barrel. Well, standard cubic meat per standard cubic me meter is the same as standard cubic feet per standard cubic feet, or million standard cubic feet per million. Okay, so you basically divide this and you get barrels per million standard cubic feet. So that would be about 160, no. 164? Okay. Per million, and this is the way we write million with standard cubic feet. Okay, and this is a rich gas condensate. So, for the fun of it, I want to know what value I'm getting out of the oil relative to the value getting out of the gas. Okay, that's a nice thing to know, to put it in perspective. So if we use, I don't know, in Norway I'll give you $8 per MCF, probably don't have that, but, and $109 per stock tank barrel. What is the value, the percentage of the value from oil, from the stock tank oil? Okay. Well, it's going to be 8 times...
Well, you guys don't. I can do it with the units in my head, but I have to be careful here to help help you out here. Um, the value, the revenue from the gas is two million standard cubic meters times 35, 31 standard cubic feet per standard cubic meter times 1,000 standard cubic feet per MSCF, okay, times eight dollars per MSCF. Let's see if things cancel. That cancels there, that cancels there, and that cancels there. We get it in dollars. And the revenue from the oil is this nine, now what was the uh, 11,600 stock tank barrels times $109 per stock tank barrel. One million two hundred sixty thousand dollars. Okay, so it's about the oil is about at least two thirds, right? What percentage of the total revenue? About about two thirds. No, maybe not. Yeah? How much is it? 69%? Okay, so it's about about 70% coming from the oil, the value. And that's for a pretty good gas price. Yes? Can you speak up a little bit? I'm sure you can come up with an expression for the percentage in terms of the oil gas ratio. Yeah, I'm sure you can do that. I, I don't want to try to do the algebra here, but I'm sure you can probably express that um, with just the oil gas ratio here. Um, okay, this is just to get a feel for, for what is the relative value, but it doesn't tell us anything about how happy Helge Lund is, right? Was he happy yesterday? Did you talk to him? No, well, you know, I mean, he was busy guy, so. Okay. But anyway, you know, this is the kind of thing that makes him have a good weekend, finding out how many billion dollars this new reservoir might represent in the portfolio. So we can also do that. But we need to convert our geological volume to a standard cubic meter, or, you know, preferably thousand standard cubic feet, we can put it in value, but at least standard cubic meter. And likewise for the oil, stock tank barrels or standard cubic meter. So how do we do that? That's a little more tricky part. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Can we convert this to moles? Initially in the reservoir. I won't use I. Okay, and I'm going to say that the reservoir pressure initial is equal to the dew point, just to make things simple. Okay. How many moles at reservoir conditions does this represent? Can we figure that out? How do we do that? 
Okay? So we need, do we need the volume itself? Hmm? Okay, there's a couple of ways to do it. You're thinking about going straight to uh, gas volume with the 2368? Yeah, but you can't use 2368. Yeah, you can't use that. We're going to have to. So you have to calculate. Yeah. So we're going to use PV equals N, R, T, and Z, right? We know pressure. We know volume. Thank you, geologist. We know moles. No, we don't know moles. That's what we're looking for. That we know. We know the reservoir temperature. Do we know the Z factor? Yeah, from, the lab test. from the lab test. Okay. Miss Marple would find our class interesting because it's like you know, figuring out what, what we're going to find out. So we can calculate the moles from this. So let's put the numbers in. Initial pressure. That's the dew point pressure. I'll just I'll write the equation first. Initial pressure, hydrocarbon pore volume, gas constant, reservoir temperature, and Z factor of G at the dew point. Okay. You've got unit problems. We're running out a little bit out of time. Okay. But I'm going to let you do this at home because I'm sure you won't be able to sleep before you get the numbers. But you've got, you know, you got PSI here and cubic meters there. You don't know what R is. Reservoir temperature is in the laboratory report. Z factor is there. The point is that we're going to get this number of moles, right? Yeah? Now down here, we calculated that we're getting this many standard cubic meters per day. We have this many moles of oil, and we have some number of moles of gas as well somewhere. Here. Right. So from this calculation, we know how many standard cubic meters of oil we get per total mole of material, right? We know that 1850 standard cubic meters of stock tank oil per the total moles that were fed into the separator, okay, that were produced. Well, that was 8667 plus 84,500. That's the total pound, uh, kilogram moles, right? Now that was just from one well during the day, but it's, it's the total moles that was coming in. But that ratio will always be the same, okay? So if instead of, instead of this term, we put in the absolute total number of moles in the reservoir, okay? That should be equal to the initial oil in place, standard cubic meters, per initial moles that we have in the reservoir. Okay? We have to go find this number from the geological information, how many moles we have in the initial reservoir. But we've got already calculated for a given number of moles in the reservoir how many stock tank cubic meters we get.
And likewise, we can do the same with the gas volume. We can take the gas volume per the same number of moles, and we can calculate the gas volume. I'll just put the numbers there. Now, the gas volume was 2 million. per the exact same quantity here. Well, that's going to be equal to the total initial gas in place. Now this is of our produced oil. This is of our produced gas. Okay? Per mole initially at the dew point. That's the moles initially in the reservoir. What it's saying is that we can do it for how much is produced in one day, but we could also say that if we produce the entire reservoir volume in one day, instead, how much surface oil would we get? How much surface gas would we get? That is the definition of initial oil in place and initial gas in place. It's saying what you've got in the reservoir, you bring it miraculously to the surface, convert it into stock tank oil and stock tank gas volumes. Okay? That is the definition of initial oil in place. It's a fictitious number. You'll never get it. But that's how you calculate the number. Yeah, you would have to, everything would have to be done from initial conditions. And I gave you that I'm going to assume that the initial reservoir pressure is the dew point. This is my separation process, yeah. If I choose a different process, I put a bunch of money in the process, and I say I can extract out as gas, I'm sorry, as oil, I can get everything of C4 and heavier, okay? And C3 minus becomes the gas, that, that everything will change. So the process, what process you decide on will, of course, determine from a given number of moles here, how much stock tank oil volume you get. But this is my simple two-stage separation. Or it's not really even that. It's, a, it's this simple assumption here. But the numbers are going to be ballpark. I mean, they're good enough for Helga Loon. <laughs> okay? They're good enough to calculate the billions. Okay? You want more billions, you have to invest. Okay? Well, you can get more if you... You know, if you build a big process facility, well, how much is it going to cost? Half a billion dollars. Mm, well, maybe, maybe not. Then you have to get into this optimization. Okay. Well, the, the point is that we're using numbers from the PVT report to do direct calculations of things that are very bottom line important. Maybe you didn't follow them all, but they're all discussed in the book in Chapter 6. And the point is that you can use, like somebody was asking, directly these numbers to make very important calculations. Okay? The Helga Loon type calculations. Directly from this report. So you want to understand this report because there's a lot of gas condensate fields in Norway if you're going to work in Norway. Okay? Have a good weekend. I'll see you.